lecture series and um, our goal is to um, invite professors from across campus to throw out a, a, a thought, maybe something creative, maybe something controversial, maybe something you haven't thought about. So you can chew on a thought as you chew your food. Um, and today we have Associate, uh, Associate Dean of Arts and Sciences, Dr. Tina Keller, and she is a, the chair of the physics department and professor. And she will be talking about dark matter factor fiction. fiction. So please give a round of applause for Tina Keller. Thank you, Leslie. Well, in western South Dakota, there is an experiment called Watts, of which many USD students and faculty are participating in, and which has been chosen by the federal government to be eligible for future funding of millions and millions of dollars. In northern Minnesota, there is an experiment called CDMS, the Cryogenic Dark Matter Experiment, soon to become Super CDMS, which will move to the Snow Lab in Canada, and is also an experiment chosen by the U.S. to receive millions and millions of dollars, and which USD students are also um, participating in. Now, millions and millions of dollars is a big thing. And all of these experiments are searching for something called dark matter. So dark matter sounds mysterious and interesting, but I hope many of you are asking the question, after all, these dollars that are being given to these experiments are partially my dollars because I pay taxes and the federal government is choosing to allocate some of those dollars to those experiments. So since these experiments are searching for dark matter, the question you should ask yourself, is there really dark matter, or is this just some crazy idea cooked up by physicists and astronomers to get lots of your money to help support their summertime in the Black Hills? <laughs> and Canada. And in fact, um, many other countries across the world, China and Italy, are all spending money on this. So maybe it's a, a ploy to get to go to foreign locations. So let me give you some answers, and hopefully convince you that dark matter is real, and is something we should be spending your tax dollars. The idea for dark matter has been around for some time. And it's actually been quite uh, embarrassing to physicists because we have no idea what it is. But we know it's there. And here's why we think we know it's there. First of all, we live in a galaxy called the Milky Way. And when we look at how that Milky Way is moving, we see that stars orbit around the center of the Milky Way. And they're actually orbiting with speeds that we cannot explain using the stuff we can see in our galaxy. If we go to other galaxies and look at how the stars are moving in those galaxies, we find out that how they move is also something we cannot explain by the stuff we see. And if we look at clusters of galaxies and we look at the temperature of the gas that's contained within those clusters, the temperature of those gas is hot enough that the stuff we can see isn't providing enough gravity to hold that gas in the cluster. So, it appears something is there pulling on things gravitationally that we can't see. Now we have two <coughs> options to fix this. We can say, we don't understand gravity. We have to get rid of that idea and come up with a new model. And that's certainly something that's been done in the past. We modified Newtonian dynamics using Einstein's theory of relativity. But between Newtonian gravity and Einstein's theory of relativity, we think we understand gravity pretty well. And so throwing out our ideas of gravity would mean too much work for the theorists to try and come up with something new. And so we've done what physicists do in many occasions when their ideas and the things they hold most sacred aren't quite backed up by experiment. They invent something new. They did it with the neutrino. Oh, 
Wow, it's been a long time, almost a hundred years ago. And now they've done it with a particle called dark matter. And they propose that dark matter is a particle that interacts weakly. Now what we mean by interacting weakly is that it doesn't interact via electromagnetic force like charged particles do. It doesn't interact via the strong force that keeps particles in the nucleus. It only interacts via gravity and a very weak nuclear interaction, which physicists with great creativity decided to call the weak force. Now, we know dark matter's out there based on the fact that we see how it behaves gravitationally. The question is, why do we want to detect it here on Earth? And part of the answer to that is just simply because. Because we as humans want to know more about the universe in which we live, so we want to know more about this mysterious dark matter part. We want to know how much mass it has. We want to know if it truly only interacts weakly. We want to know, is there something to which we can put that dark matter particle, some use for that dark matter particle? And so since this is supposed to be controversial, and I think I'm running out of time, I will suggest a very controversial use for dark matter. And so this answers the question, why do we want to detect it? Dark matter interacts via the gravitational force. I'm sure all of you have heard of black holes, those very intense gravitational objects. And some of you may have heard of, of wormholes, which are a form of black hole that might allow space travel. If any of you saw the movie Interstellar, which I unfortunately I have not seen, but I was told quite a bit about it, the idea of a wormhole allowed interstellar travel. So my suggestion is that if we truly understand dark matter, and I'm looking to see if any of my physicist colleagues are here before I say this, if we truly understand dark matter, perhaps someday in the future we'll be able to use it to create wormholes that will allow us to travel through the universe. So dark matter is a fact, we know it's there, we want to detect it, and I propose to you a very useful use for dark matter. Thank you for your attention.